<laughs> You're excited for this one, huh? Slave City family, what is up? It is Art Rose, who's ready for a nap, like in just a couple minutes, so I wanted her to say hi, and Bobby in the kitchen for a shelf-stable pantry-style Aldi haul. Because I went to Aldi shopping yesterday, along with a couple other grocery stores to get a ton of stuff, and not only was there no line to get in, they were stocked with a ton of goodies. And I wanted to focus on stuff that's relatively shelf-stable, except for a couple items that I was literally like blown away at, uh, because a lot of us are home right now. We need some healthy-ish pantry staples, and Aldi's gonna hook us up with some pretty impressive stuff at really good prices. So before we get rocking and rolling, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, share, all those things are really cool, but the most important thing is below the video, a bell icon. Uh, enable the bell icon, Rose, and then enable all notifications because we have so many videos, two to three going live every week, but live streams like this kind of menu we did the other night are going live three times a week at four o'clock Chicago time, usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And by enabling all notifications, that's how you make sure you get a push on your phone. Um, so snacks, right? You go right in the door at Aldi and I see a bunch of chips and dips. So check this out, Art. Like, I love tortilla chips and I love blue corn. Blue corn's fantastic. It pretty much tastes the same as yellow corn, but it's blue, it's fun. Right, Rose? And Daddy's a fun guy. But we have to look at the oils. So if I come over here by Art, here's the organic yellow corn tortillas. Before I even go there, notice how all these bags say organic. Organic, blue corn and organic popcorn. Very, very important because corn uh, is a GMO crop and if it's not organic, it's gonna be Monsanto laced, right? So this is the yellow corn. Take a look at these ingredients right here. We have organic yellow corn, organic expeller pressed vegetable oil, and then some salt. So very interesting, right? I'd love to see avocado oil. That's the next thing for Aldi. They gotta graduate to like avocado oil or coconut oil. But this is fine, this is allowable. But tell me, riddle me this, Batman. How come with the, uh, what's that noise? <laughs> How come with the blue corn organic, instead of the oil being expeller pressed, all of a sudden it's just regular organic sunflower oil. When you're missing those two words, expeller pressed, it's a big deal. And then when we go to the organic, simply nature popcorn, Great for Netflixing, great for Amazon Prime videoing. We look at the ingredients, and once again, we have organic sunflower oil. So we don't have the expeller pressed. So now I come back magically with Rose out of my arm. She's going night, night. Have a good nap, Rose. Have a good one. It just shocks me to have that mismatching of oils because it's really important if it's not expeller pressed canola or sunflower, it's still highly processed and refined and it can actually alter the fatty acid when you have that amount of processing in the form of heat and pressure. Um, so for now, I would go with this chip. This is the best one at Aldi, but you need a dip, right? And this jumped out at me because I love double roasted salsa. And this is so interesting because not only is it double roasted, but it's organic, which is really nice. If we look at the ingredients here, like the casa mamita. Oh yeah, how about the name? This is so great. They did a great job with this one. Casa mamita, que paso mamita. That's cool, right? So the ingredients here are really, really nice. It's great to see organic diced tomatoes because I'll show you the one I really loved isn't organic. And then everything else here is super clean. They don't put any added sugar or anything. But, Art, right, what is my favorite salsa on the market? Frontera, which they sell also at uh, Aldi. And we're gonna do a side-by-side -side taste comparison. This is my favorite double roasted tomato salsa. Ingredient, ingredients are very clean, but they don't use organic tomatoes and tomatoes are on the dirty dozen. So I'm gonna give Aldi a little props for that, but I have to do a taste comparison because the Aldi one is a little cheaper. True, that's a very good point. This is not a, a uh, unbiased study here, right? So this is... And Art and I always debate and wonder, where does the double roasting come from? Have we figured that out yet, Art? The single roasting is obviously roasting the tomatoes and the onions, but what's the double? I think after you puree it, then you roast that mixture too. An after puree roast, interesting. It's better, guys. This is so much better, and they don't have this variety. At um, Aldi, they just have the regular one. This has a more smoky flavor. All right, come over and try this real quick. I prefer the color of the red one. Yeah. I like salsa to be red. I like salsa to be tasty.
it would be unbelievable. Artist pointing to? Oh, you have to back up, yeah. Frontera, right? It's better. It's better. All right. Art yeah, and I agree. Yeah. Agreed. How much was this? Uh, I have it up on the screen before. I don't remember. Cheaper than this? Yes. It's Casa Mamita. I like that better. Mamita knows how to save the dinero. So there it is. But if you're at Aldi, get the double roasted. I'm telling you, in that double roast, magical things happen. Now, before we go on to more snackable stuff, this isn't shelf stable, but I was walking through the entire store like I always do. I've never seen this at Aldi. Raise your hand if you have. They have ground lamb there. And the price was fantastic. Heck, it's even halal. Maybe it's leftover from Easter when everyone's making lamb. And lamb is almost always 100% grass-fed. This is a product of Australia. Australia has amazing farming uh, uh, standards down there. I love ground lamb. Maybe it's going to be a staple. I'm not sure. I was in Australia last year, actually, with the Australian Meat and uh, Livestock Association. Went to the lamb farms. Unbelievable quality. My guess is this is 100% grass-fed, and the price, $5.99, what, uh, I believe it was, is an amazing deal. I want some lamb capture right now. <laughs> I can make that happen, Art. Um, all right, more back to snackable stuff. So we think of Terra chips, you know, that really popular uh, root vegetable mix. Here's the Aldi version. And uh, it's nice because it doesn't have to be organic because sweet potatoes are not dirty dozen. And uh, neither are these other vegetables here. And once again, it's just so easy. Once you guys know what to look for, you go straight to the oil, right? Boom. Expeller pressed non-GMO canola oil. Once again, avocado would be better. Beet juice to color it. I'm totally down with that, right? And the non-GMO is right there. So another great snackable thing. Now, this is really cool. I don't know. It wasn't an Aldi find. It could be limited. But this is biltong sticks. Biltong is, I was laughing, biltong to tong, tong, tong. We always, we always say that. Uh, it's a South African style of making beef jerky that's very, very clean because they don't use uh, sugar and canola oil and stuff like this. And this one is combining South African technique with new Mexican hatch green chilies. But there's one thing that I wish were more ideal with this. Look at the ingredients. Clean as can be. Ooh, chilies, coriander, nutmeg, and clove. Classy using lamb casings. The only thing I wish this were, let's say it together. One, two, three, grass-fed beef. It's not grass-fed beef. Now, you'll know, because we talked about this in other videos, that Aldi does have now uh, grass-fed jerky, but they kind of ruin it, in my opinion, because they use uh, brown sugar and hydrolyzed soy and stuff like that. So somewhere in the middle would be nice. But the nice thing about Bill Tong, oh, that looks like a little cigar. It's soft and chewable. Mmm, delicious. Wow. So if they have these at yours, it's probably the best treat they have there in addition to the um, Sims Bill Tong strips. Mmm, wow, the spices. The hatch chili gets you later on, but the clove, <clears throat> the clove and the nutmeg, very, very lovely. Man, and that's the right amount of heat. Perfect time for an Amazon break. Yellow. Amazon package for Bessie Thank you. Then we continue down the snack aisle. There's so many snacks in one area right there. You really got to, <laughs> Art looks ridiculous with his Bill Tong stick out of his mouth right now. You got to be careful what you grab, because if you see something that says cauliflower cracker, you're going to think, oh, it's gluten-free, maybe it's keto, it's clean because cauliflower is great. We gotta read the ingredients, my friends, right? So this is where I get a little peeve sometimes. So yeah, cauliflower flour is the first ingredient, right? But then count how many starches, including simple, are after that. So whole grain rice flour. I think that's another word for brown rice flour. I don't mind that, but then cassava flour. Potato starch, yeah, white rice flour, potato flakes, cassava starch, starch city, USA, right? Then responsibly sourced palm oil. Responsibly sourced is a little better for the environment, but it's still a highly processed, toxic, in my opinion, oil, palm oil is, unless it's red palm oil. And then you go down here, everything else looks pretty good. Shiitake mushrooms, lentil flour. But you guys, when you have all these simple starches, there's no nutrition, it spikes your uh, blood sugars, and it's really bad news. When the carbs, you know, are high as is, but don't think this is going to be low carb and don't think this is going to be what I consider a 
good quality gluten-free snack because when you want gluten-free, it's got to be complex grains. Like if it were cauliflower flour, brown rice flour, and then after that, amaranth, quinoa, millet, I'd be cool with that. But by going with uh, cassava, potato, rice, uh, more cassava, no, homie, don't play that game, right? Well, look at this. In the spice aisle, I really don't buy any spices normally at Aldi because they're not the highest quality in my opinion, but they're getting in the everything bagel seasoning game. And the price was right. Stone Mill, right, which is their spice uh, brand. Look at this. That's what you want to see. A very, very popular seasoning. It's really nice on avocado toast, uh, sprinkled over salads. And it's basically the same ingredients here as the Trader Joe's one. Um, I don't know. Does anyone know the price of the Trader Joe's one offhand? Because I have the price of this one. I just wonder which one's cheaper. My guess is Aldi, but both are great. So it's really cool to see that. And then not a fresh item, not a uh, shelf stable item, but I saw celery juice as an Aldi find. And this got really, really popular. It's supposed to help with weight loss. Uh, it's supposed to help as an anti-inflammatory. They say with autoimmune diseases too. I don't know about that, but Suja is a good brand. It's organic celery and it's cold pressed. It's quite refreshing, right? Some people do those extreme uh, celery juice diets. Just keep in mind, whenever you buy these Sujas or these cold pressed juices, well, yes, they are cold pressed. But after that, my friends, they are pasteurized a little bit. Because look, how else would it stay until 6-6? Six, six? You need pasteurization. But the nice thing about these cold pressed juices is they're not um, pasteurized with heat. They're pasteurized with pressure. It's called HPP. And that doesn't create nearly the amount of heat as normal pasteurization. So while it does kill some of the living nutrients, not nearly as many as you would normally get from what's called like high temperature, short time pasteurization, like they do with milk in the chill chest. But you know, that's kind of refreshing to be honest. What were your words, Art, when you saw me pull this out of the fridge? <laughs> it was more of a, gro a groan or something like that. Um, <laughs> it's actually very tasty. Um, I love, I shouldn't say I love, I like to see superfood blends like oats and flax. And if you watch my Trader Joe's video, they have what I consider one of the best grab and go oat, flax, and I think it was a chia seed mixture. And this I thought would be the same thing. It's organic oats and flax. And you might grab this saying, hey, oats and flax are great. Uh, flax has a ton of omega threes and Bobby says organic. For oats, it has to be, otherwise it scores high in glyphosates, the active ingredient roundup. Well, yeah, I do say that, but I also say always look at the ingredients. And unfortunately, they're sneaking cane sugar. So complex carbohydrate, yes. Great superfood flaxseed, yes. Cane sugar is the devil, right? How much? 10 grams of added sugar for one packet. How much sugar is 10 grams? It's two and a half teaspoons of white sugar in a small packet. Guys, that is a lot of sugar. And this is where we get in trouble. I talk about this a lot, is when you combine fat and carbs, that, I'm sorry, sugar and carbs and fat usually, that's the trifecta, this is the duo of destruction. Sugar and carbs is how you become insulin resistant, it's how you get fat. So you really don't want that sugar in there, otherwise this would be great if they just made it without the sugar, right? Well, oh, how cool is this? So I saw on Instagram that they had cauliflower rice in the uh, dried packet like this. I couldn't find it at my Aldi, but they did have the 90 second quinoa and brown rice. Now, if you're gonna eat carbs, I always say make them count, make them whole grain uh, carbs. This is organic, which is fantastic. The price was right. But look at this, you guys, you kidding me? Right, quinoa, long grain brown rice, garlic, hello, organic olive oil, no cruddy expeller press, schmeller press. That's the good stuff, right? So imagine making this in 90 seconds in a hot pan with a little shot of olive oil, maybe fold in at the end some lemon zest and some herbs and some uh, Parmesan. Make a chicken breast, a steak, a shrimp, fantastic. If they do have this at your Aldi in the cauliflower rice version, I think it'd be really good because there's no water in here. It seems to be uh, kind of um, vacuum sealed, which is really important because the watery ones like we did from the Costco video last week was atrocious. So that was super cool. Now, typical pantry staple that I've been talking about a lot lately with the stay at home order are stuff like this, tuna and canned uh, salmon. This is a great deal at, uh, at Costco, I'm sorry, at Aldi, wild Alaskan pink salmon. Just one ingredient. The one thing Art and I don't understand 
is they pack it with the bones. Where does it say that, Art? Uh, I said contain the bone. Oh, here, yeah. I bought one the other day. That it had, just might be a disclaimer. Maybe they can't get them all out. Very yeah, there was a lot of bones in there, which surprised me. And the one I bought had skin on there too. But you guys, this is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. Really great if you can't get uh, fresh salmon. And then they do have my favorite tuna, which is chunk light, right? I always say look for chunk light or... Uh, skipjack because albacore tuna is just too big of a tuna you guys it scores very high in mercury so chunk light is really best but this is in oil this is in water if this were packed in extra virgin olive oil i'd be giddy as a schoolgirl, right but 10 times out of 10 i can always predict what kind of oil they're using look at that they pack it in soybean oil that's like taking such a nutrient dense protein packed seafood goodie like this and packing in the most GMO refined processed oil ever. If you can find it in extra virgin olive oil, I can't, I've looked everywhere, get it. If you know where it is, leave a comment down below because I'd love to know that. But these are two great pantry staples that are fantastic. And then it's nice to have honey on hand. And you guys, this is raw honey. And it was the same price as the non-raw honey at, uh, Aldi, I would scoop this because raw honey means it's never heated past a certain temperature and you're, you're keeping, you're retaining the living nutrients in honey, which is really good. There's a ton of antibacterial uh, properties to honey. I was just blown away that the one next to it, the clover honey, which is a little more processed, was the same price. Go with the raw all day. And this really matters. See that little bee right there? Bzz, bzz, bzz. True source verified. That tells you exactly where your honey's from. And that's really important. This honey is from USA, Canada, and Argentina. I always say, ideal world, you wanna get USA local honey because you wanna know where your honey comes from. Uh, at least with True Source Verified, it's only sourced from those regions or produced in those regions. If you don't see that, a lot of times, and I've talked about this, China uh, is notorious for producing honey, cutting it with brown rice syrup, and then exporting to the US. We got wise to their game, so we banned imported honey from China. What did they do? Just call it a day and go do something else? No, they started exporting that honey to Singapore, Malaysia. Then they would import it here, so they basically got around the rules, and you don't want that. That's garbage. So make sure you know either locally sourced honey or true source verified from the country that it says. It's very, very important, right? I really like this art. I think you're missing out. Mm, delicious. Uh, what else here? Oh, last but not least, I got, we've talked about this a bunch of times, but this is probably the healthiest sweet treat in Aldi. Sorry for repeating myself, but we just love these. It's a paleo six ingredient cashew crisp. It literally blows me away that it's made with coconut sugar, cashews, coconuts, cassava flour, and cocoa powder. Coconut sugar is the best paleo sweetener along with maple syrup ever. So I think Aldi, like they're getting there, right? They've made huge strides. People who I talk to who have watched my videos who haven't been to Aldi in ages are like, wow, I didn't realize uh, Aldi had all this stuff. But they have really, mm, really increased their, uh, their game. And you guys, we're talking about one gram of sugar per crisp and coconut sugar. That's about as good as you can get. I really just hope they can start upping the oil quality, right? Because I want to see avocado oil. I want to see coconut oil. I don't really want to see too much expeller press, but if they can't do that, it's got to be 100% expeller press. And I heard now Aldi has 100% grass-fed frozen meatballs. Someone DM'd me on Instagram. The ingredients were amazing. There was no filler. It was all thriller. It had like oat, uh, organic oat meal in there to use as a binder. I tried to get it in mine to show you guys, but they were out. And they had some uh, spin drift that they weren't selling because it wasn't scanning properly. That's an amazing uh, um, drink. It's the best one there by far, way better than LaCroix. But we'll talk about that maybe for a summer themed haul. So that's it, you know, we had a bunch of really good stuff here that's mostly shelf stable, great pantry staples that you can make at a moment's notice or snackability uh, factor off the roof for uh, Netflix and streaming. So that's it, you guys. Um, 
Art and I got a ton more videos to do now that Art's back in action. Live streams three times a week, so make sure you subscribe. Spread the word. The only way this channel keeps growing the way it has is by you spreading the love. We got two more videos going below us right now. But Art and I will see you very soon. Until then, we say into you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and peace. And cheers to that celery juice. All mine. Art doesn't want any.